everybody and welcome back to part 16 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. Uh, in this part we're going to be fitting the last of the Pontos wooden decks which is this uh, part. It's the after part of the uh, shelter deck here. Uh, and I need to do that before I fit this uh, after concentrating position which is part N2. Uh, of the trumpeter kit and which needs quite a bit of modification we'll be doing that in this video as well uh, and enabling us to fit that to the back we'll also finish off uh, the rear screens which we started quite a number of uh, episodes ago uh, when we were fitting the shelter deck part of the trumpeter kit uh, so I need to just finish off those brass parts and get them fitted along with this side piece of bulkhead here so between them those two will finish off the after structure of the of the ship this particular part the rear screen uh, which is the part that has the ship's name on it uh, at the back just needs some etch brass windows uh, fitting to it and some doors and so on i won't be fitting the ladders down to the quarter deck uh, at this stage. I'll wait until I'm doing the quarter deck details for that. But otherwise I'll get these painted, uh, the etch brass fitted to them and I'll get the joints between the rear screen and this side bulkhead cleaned up uh, and fitted so they all fit nice and uh, neatly on the side. So the first thing I'm going to do is to fit the deck and as we've done in all the other deck applications, I want to apply a coat of gloss varnish to the trumpeter plastic. That just removes any uh, bits of dust and grit that might be on the, on the surface here. And it just helps the wooden deck stick more securely. So I'm going to get on and do that now and then we'll get that deck fitted. The first thing I want to do here is just run uh, a tack cloth around the deck just to remove any dust uh, or particles or the worst of them anyway because uh, I want to get as smooth as possible a surface for the uh, deck the adhesive on the back of the deck uh, obviously sticks better to a smooth surface There's actually quite a bit of um, grey overspray on there. I'm just using some Mr. Hobby um, clear, gloss clear here. And just going round where the wooden decks to be applied. I want to avoid the uh, basis for the four inch mounts here which I've painted in the whole grey. Uh, so these two aft ones here port and starboard and the rear one in the centre uh, I've got the grey basis paint painted so I want to avoid those because they'll show through the wooden deck when it's applied. There are some areas around uh, these two mountains here which uh, don't need to be varnished, they're not wooden decks. They've got some uh, Pontos etched parts to fit. And I just want to be careful not to go right up to the, or not to go on to the uh, quarter scene that I've painted here at the front of the shelter deck. At this stage there's actually not too much of the structure to uh, fit. There's obviously the after concentrating position that we've talked about, there's the rear pom-pom bandstand and there's a couple of vents here uh, and then that's really it. Apart from that there's the uh, 15 inch guns which are obviously a big part of the structure. 
but once these parts are done the ship will look more or less finished uh, but obviously there's lots of work still to do with the detailing parts that need to be fitted so uh, whilst the ship might look as though it's uh, nearly finished there will be a long way to go still so there we are that's enough for, that's enough for the varnish and I'll uh, I'll just let that dry now before I can uh, start to apply this wooden deck okay so I'm ready to uh, fit this deck now the varnish is uh, nice and dry I've left it overnight uh, the other thing is I've just made sure that uh, these pieces of plastic rod that I put through down onto the side batteries uh, they're cut off flush with the uh, deck here just so it doesn't interfere with the uh, wooden deck when I apply it so I've just checked the fit and one of the key markers really is these projections here uh, which come through these holes so they're obviously very precise and they will position the rest of the deck and what that shows me is that actually there's a little bit of overlap uh, at the front just a tiny amount and it's just enough to stop the deck sitting at the front so I'm going to take off a fraction off the front of the wooden deck there and I'll come back and test fit it once uh, I've done that so it's probably a third of a millimeter off that and uh, that's just improved the fit a little bit that will go in now so it's perfectly flush along the along the front edge there so I'm happy with that we can uh, take the backing off now sometimes a bit awkward to get these going you'll remember that when we did the other decks I didn't take the whole backing off all at once and that's just to give you a bit of uh, time to get the deck down where you want it without it grabbing in other places so I've just taken the back off there and I'll just put that uh, back on loosely and that'll just protect this back end from grabbing while I put the front of the deck down so you just need to be careful when we're taking this off because it's easy to uh, pull it a bit too hard and tear it where the various shapes are and I want to make sure that all the plastic backing is out of these holes otherwise it'll just prevent the deck from sitting properly so they're all clear So I'm looking to locate the deck on over the uh, mouldings on the trumpeter part. just ease that down over the mouldings and then just remove the back end of plastic that we use to preserve the 
stickiness on the back here. I'm assuming there is such a thing. In any case, it's uh, just as well to make sure that uh, the deck's stuck down properly. So I just want to make sure that this deck is properly fixed down. I have read somewhere, I can't remember where, that um, some of the glues used on these uh, decks are pressure sensitive. Which, um, I've never heard of that before, but maybe it's right. You'll notice that um, the deck doesn't extend to these areas around the after UP position and this 4 inch position. And that's because we've got these uh, pieces of etched brass uh, which fit into those uh, locations there like that. Uh, there's a lot of debate about the colours of these particular parts of the deck. Um, and whether or not they were laid in corticine or some form of Semtex, which was an anti-slip uh, coating. Uh, and there is some new research about that that's uh, available to browse on the HMS Hood website. So if you're building the model, you might be able to, uh, you might be interested in going and having a look at that. The actual Pontos parts are laid as though they were covered with corticine, so they've got the pattern of the uh, brass strips which held the corticine uh, panels down. Uh, but it seems very likely that they were actually Semtex or some sort of anti slip paint. Uh, so I'm going to have to work out how to uh, how to approach that, but uh, I don't think I'll put these down just yet. We'll see how we get on this week. So maybe that gives me a bit more time to to ponder that one. Just make sure that this structure sits properly, which it does, and then the bandstand, the after pom pom bandstand goes here. There are vent houses here and a bit further forward, uh, which we'll also be dealing with. So the next job is to uh, tackle these rear screens, which are these parts. So there's a bit of uh, brass detail to be fitted to these there are some window shutters uh, a door to fit and there's a uh, cover for this vent at the back here uh, which we need to fit uh, and i'm going to pre-paint the part uh, before fitting it it can always be touched up uh, later we won't get it on completely clean and there'll be a clean up to do here at the front end where it joins this side bulkhead um, so it'll be a case of painting it for the majority and then fitting it and doing any touch-ups that we need to do afterwards. So we'll get over to the bench and get the brass work done on these screens. Okay, so these are the rear screens. We don't have too much to do with them. Uh, we just have uh, the window shutters to fit, which are these parts here. Uh, and they just fit onto the sides of the windows. You can have them open or closed. So I'm going to do the two forward ones uh, open. Uh, 
and the aft one's closed. So something like that. Then there's a vent cover at the back. So this vent here has this uh, cover which uh, faces aft. I guess it was just to keep uh, seawater and spray from entering the vent. So that's positioned something like that. And then we have this cover here for this opening which has to be folded so it folds back on itself like so and uh, that just sits up and that sits up in a position something like that so let's get those parts glued on and I'll start with the uh, shutters so I'll do the two open ones first these shutters are different port and starboard uh, and they're numbered differently on the fret so you just need to be careful not to get them mixed up I've left the port ones on the fret for the time being so that I don't get them mixed up. So next thing I'll do is put this uh, vent cover on. I'm going to add a dab of super thin onto that just to reinforce that joint. And the last thing is this uh, cover here. There's a door to fit here uh, and I think what I'll do is I'll put that in once the screen is fitted to the uh, plastic bulkhead on the model. So I'll go ahead and do the same process for the port side then I can uh, get them primed, painted and we can go over and fit them to the model. The screens are nearly ready to uh, paint and fit now but before I do I've just done a little bit of work on this part which is uh, the rear splinter shield for the after uh, four inch mounting here at the back and Pontos have reprovided the shield because uh, this kit along with many others uh, has this shield running round in a semicircle round the back and in reality it was flattened at the back here. Uh, so this part which contains the flat part of the shield and this rear bulkhead is all in one part and obviously the shield runs in a curve around the side here. Uh, to get that shape what I've done is solder two floor pieces, Pontos provide two floor pieces that go uh, to the side of the wooden deck here on the top and they're shaped to the correct profile of the sides of the shield. So you can see there that the uh, shield is curved around the sides flat at the back and these floor pieces when soldered correctly form the correct profile of the sides. Uh, I've done that because obviously I want to get a join between the back bulkhead and the side screens. 
so I didn't want to be doing all this work with the back bulkhead and this splinter shield uh, having already fitted these side screens I want to be able to do it all more or less at the same time so I know that it's all going to fit together this shield has some braces to fit on the inside uh, which I'll do and I'll glue those uh, rather than try and solder them I'm just a bit concerned about going back in with a soldering iron and releasing the soldering work that uh, I've already done on here so I'll just glue that strip which contains all the supporting brackets uh, to the inside of that shield to get that right it just needs quite a bit of test fitting really uh, just to make sure it's all going to fit together so I'll get this uh, part finished uh, primed and painted along with the side screens uh, and then we can get them fitted so I'm ready to fit the screens now they've been primed and painted in the hull grey uh, and I've glazed the large windows so just a word about these uh, windows here uh, if you do choose to model them open as I have here at least the two forward ones uh, it's worth knowing what the windows led into so here at the back was the Admiral's day cabin so these two windows led onto the Admiral's day cabin and the cabin went all the way across the ship uh, as did this room here which was the Admiral's dining room and it went all the way through and the reason for pointing that out is because if you are going to open the windows my suggestion will be to open the same windows on both sides uh, and I say that just because it's pretty unlikely that uh, you would go into the uh, cabin and just open the windows to one side or another so I've made sure that I've opened the same windows on both sides of the ship so it's just a, a small detail but uh, worth pointing out I think so we've got a good fit there with that screen and it's nice at the front as well so I can go ahead and apply some glue I'm going to use thick super glue for this and I just want to make sure that the whole of the screen is covered or the vast majority of it anyway there's plenty of uh, places to apply the glue but you don't want too much that it squeezes out but you don't want it squeezing out onto the deck particularly so I'm staying a bit above the deck here sorry I might be knocking the camera but it's not always easy getting the camera position for things like this and I must admit that I do concentrate on the model rather than the camera work so apologies if I do catch it okay so that's enough there and I know that I've got a good fit at the back and this is where the benefit of test fitting comes in you don't want to be pulling and shoving this all over the place once you've got it into position and so if you know that after test fitting it's going to fit perfectly it really is just a case of dropping it on as I've done there so that's gone on really nicely and it won't need any touch-ups at all that's really good so this next part is this side bulkhead here and again I've test fitted that before painting it 
So again, I know I've got a good fit along there. I will have a little bit of filling to do uh, on the junction of this side bulkhead and the back screen. But uh, it shouldn't be too much, it's got a pretty good fit. The, I've already done the port side and it wasn't quite as good. There's a bit more work to do on the port side. So this part sits on the plastic hull. That's really nice fit. Pleased with that. That's going to need very, very little work. Just a bit of filler down at the bottom here. But uh, nothing major at all. That's really good. I have glazed these windows. I'm not sure whether that's uh, right. Um, but they are quite big windows and I can't imagine that they were unglazed and just relied on the shutters. Um, but anyway, the glaze now, so that's how I've approached it. The ship's name is on the side here. It's so tempting to just polish away the paint and leave the brass letters showing through. They're in relief. It's so tempting to do that, but uh, that wouldn't really be accurate. The uh, brass was polished in peacetime, so the ship's name would have uh, stood out, but uh, in wartime it was painted the same colour as the uh, hull, which is a pity. It's a great temptation. But resist if you're building a wartime uh, version of the model. So I'm fitting the after four inch splinter shield now. So again that's been uh, pre-painted. Take care to get that in the correct position there. There are some small um, bulges from the trumpeter kit which fit underneath the platform at the back. Uh, so I'll do those in a moment once this is set up. Okay, the uh, next thing I'm going to tackle is part N2 in the trumpeter kit, which is the after control position. And there are quite a lot of uh, inaccuracies with this part. And we're going to be using quite a bit of the Pontos uh, set to correct it. So various walls and so on, the window arrangements uh, are incorrect. Uh, and various other things. So. There's quite a bit to do with this uh, and there's quite a bit of surgery which uh, Pontos mark out in the instructions here. So that's the first thing that we'll do. We'll clean up uh, part N2 and get it ready for some of the brass.
that's the uh, majority taken off. I'll just go back with the knife now. Take these uh, molded ladders off, and we have this piece of brass that goes all the way around the uh, outside, most of the way around the outside, anyway. So that's going to need to be bent. It's a bit odd because Pontos don't provide the fold lines on this part, which is Strange. I don't quite understand why that is. We've got some new engravings here for the position of uh, two portals and this door which replaces the door and these square windows. And as we've done on some of the other structures I want to just take out the plastic behind there. We did it on the rear screens where we wanted to see through the portals so I'll just take out an area around there so that when we look through those it's uh, hollow. So I'm not certain why Pontos didn't provide some fold marks along here, but I'm just going to score the brass very gently just to give just to give me that fold line. That's given us a sharp edge, which is what we need really. Okay, I'll do the same on the other side. I really dislike it when um, H brass has the railings fitted. Especially on a part like this where you've got to do quite a bit of move uh, maneuvering with it because uh, they just tend to get bent and distorted you've got to be ever so careful with them okay so a bit of uh, fiddling around and that's going to be okay it's going to need a bit of filler at the front there but it's nice around the bottom the windows and uh, scuttles are all open, so that's worked. So I'll just uh, I'll just put that to one side so it doesn't get damaged, and we'll just check out what we need to do next. The next thing to do is to sort out this part one thousand and eight which goes around the top and gives us the new window arrangement at the back. So that's uh, this part which has got quite a few bends on it as you can see. So I've just annealed that very quickly especially around the curve at the back. So the shape is the curve at the front, uh, rather at the back, it's at the aft side of the ship. Then we've got this little fold to make which tucks up inside and then this panel at the back 
folds inside so it goes inside this gap here that's quite an involved part really um, Pontos have done a good job designing that just before I glue it there's another piece that goes inside which is 1007 so I'll just fold that up and just make sure that uh, I'll just check how it's going to fit in relation to this brass part I don't want to be getting that glued on and then find that it's going to interfere with the fit of this uh, so I'll fold it up and do some experimentation just to uh, see how it all goes together so it appears that this goes in from the side oh, I see what it does it's um, this part here so 107 is lifting the gap here it's lifting the platform to be level with uh, this part of the plastic here so this box forms the new floor so that has to slide in like that I'll actually solder that up so my soldering skills are coming on a little bit and that's thanks to all the helpful tips and comments that I've had in previous uh, episodes I'll definitely be soldering a bit more in the future okay so if you're wondering um, about that part Wonder Blow 7 that's how it should look so it's uh, a hollow box long thin box with this panel at the side and that slides in hopefully it's a bit tight something's just obstructing it there's a piece of flash actually on the inside of the trumpet of plastic there that's just preventing it sliding in uh, it's still very snug see why I soldered it now it wouldn't have stood up to all this jiggling around had it been uh, just glued together it had all opened up by now so that's it it's just um, a case of making the adjustments to the uh, plastic and you can see what that's done so it's lifted the uh, corridor there to the level of the rest of the uh, structure in front the fit of these uh, Pontos parts is remarkable really um, how on earth you design something to fit in such a precise way is beyond me really okay I'm going to go ahead and fit this part now okay so that's one double o eight in it's gone on quite nicely actually so I just need to slip this platform in now I tried it the other way around uh, put in the put in this part in which is one double or seven and I then found I couldn't get uh, the top part in so again it, it's a case of uh, test fitting these parts all the time okay so that um, part 1007 has gone in without any glue 
just a couple of tiny little adjustments and uh, it's slotted in there so I'm going to leave that uh, as it is part 104 is a small bracket that fits inside here it's basically holding this floor up um, and it's quite difficult to see in the Pontos instructions uh, but that's where it goes just inside you can see it just inside there with the hole I'm going to do uh, these parts now which are uh, kind of a cylinder a half cylinder on the side of the uh, structure here at the back and it's made up by these uh, braces and uh, an outer skin so um, I've made those cylinders up bit of a mess at the back but uh, that doesn't matter so they'll just fit on the back and I suppose if you don't want to use the uh, brass uh, you could use brass tube and cut it or styrene tube would do just as well I think um, but it's just been a bit more practice with uh, my soldering so I'm okay with those before I put this uh, piece on I need to add the ladders and doors uh, on the inside here so we're at this stage here so there's three ladders for the port side and a door so we'll do this door first The uh, tall ladder goes up uh, the side of the bulkhead here and up to this hatch. So obviously he climbed up the ladder and out of the hatch to get onto the uh, platform above. do this uh, scuttle as well I've just noticed at the back here there's some uh, mold marks that I just want to take off they will show up under the primer if I don't remove them this is as much of the port side as I can do at the moment uh, because we have to fit the bulkhead before this last ladder goes in on this side so we'll move over to the starboard side now it's a bit different on the uh, starboard side because we don't have this ladder going up to the platform which means that the hatch here that Trumpeter have moulded is uh, wrong and I've checked my drawings uh, with that and this hatch didn't exist so I'll remove that first I should really have done it when I was cleaning the part up but I forgot the next thing I'll do is build up this box 1013 which sits on the side I think this is a water tank it looks like the others uh, on the bridge um, next there's a ladder that goes up to this new platform that we fitted
I'm going to fit the underside of uh, these actual searchlight platforms now. So the largest rib is already part of the um, structure. These are the uh, brackets that go under the searchlight platform and there's something odd that you just need to be uh, on the lookout for if you've got the Pontos set. These parts are all numbered 994 but actually there are two different uh, sizes and I was just a bit wary because I was looking at the underside of the etch brass part here and the lengths of these engravings here are different so the ones that go around this bit are longer than the ones that go around here so I just had a quick look at the brackets and even though they're all numbered 994 they are two different sizes. Um, I'll just try and get a shot. So you can just see there that one is longer than the other. That's a perfect triangle. And that one's got a longer side to it. It's very unusual for Pontos. Normally if there's the slightest difference in the parts uh, they'll number the fret differently, but uh, they haven't in this case. It's just something that uh, you'd have to work out for yourself, really. The shorter ones go around the front side here. It's very odd and very unusual, as I said. I've got the uh, brackets in there. I've um, gradually opened up this gap here until it will take this brass um, shield. And that's holding itself in place really. But I'll add a drop of glue just to secure it. Okay, so I think I can put this um, bulkhead on now. Right, so that's gone on pretty well. I can put these um, cylinders on now. couple of railings that go around the top of the searchlight uh, platform here which are these and obviously they're going to need bending around but they're not in a curve they go in segments
so I'll do them like we did with the forward searchlight platforms. I'm going to do them uh, bit by bit. So I'll start at the back and fix it to the top of the plastic and the shield at the side. And once it's attached at one end, we can just go around and bend each segment. And just shape it to the platform. And eventually it meets up at this end. I need a handle for this, it's getting too um, delicate. So I'm just going to glue that uh, piece of sprue inside. That's better, I've got something to hold on to. If you uh, try and hold it by the structure itself, you end up collapsing these uh, railings. And there's just a greater risk of knocking things off. So that should uh, help. I can put these uh, ladders on now. I don't know whether you can hear the voices outside, but that's my wife, um, who, believe it or not, takes the cat for a walk. I've never heard of anybody doing that. I've heard of people walking dogs, of course, but never a cat. And the reason for it is because is a really uh, efficient hunter and unfortunately he goes around killing all the local rabbits. We live out in the countryside and there's rabbits all over the place and as soon as he goes out he goes uh, hunting and she can't bear uh, the rabbits being killed. So she escorts him round the garden. It must be very frustrating for him, really, to think that he's done so well to catch a rabbit and then she um, she takes it off him. Last thing for the top part anyway is the this curved flange that goes around the forward part of the shield. This is the uh, rear navigation light that goes on the back here. So um, there's a couple of folds. I just want to put the front down first, the ring really. And then the legs if you like fold back. And then finally there's two more little feet at the bottom. I said it was a navigation light. It might actually be a fog light. I'm not sure. I can't remember from uh, looking at this part before. So it goes up underneath the 
uh, flange on the shield at the back there. So I want to make sure I've got that perfectly central. So with the primer on you can just see any little uh, gaps and uh, it's just worth going round with a bit of milliput just to fill in those gaps especially between the brass and the plastic I'm happy with how that's come out so we'll get over and get a coat of the grey on it so that's the after defence position uh, painted now I'm going to have to go back in and do some touch-ups on it because the, I had some trouble with the airbrush it was spitting so I've got one or two uh, spots of paint on it that needs tidying up but uh, I'll give the airbrush a good clean out and uh, we'll be able to sort that out so as you can see we've got the uh, rear screens fitted we've got the aft four inch splinter shield uh, modification done as well and the after defense position after concentrating position whatever you want to call it uh, constructed we need to do the searchlight uh, platforms that uh, stuck out on two wings at the back here so we'll get those done over the next week and finally get this uh, uh, structure fitted down onto the deck so that's as much as I've managed to get done this week I hope to have got a little bit more than that really but uh, it's steady progress so that's it for part 16 uh, in the next part I'm gonna have to uh, bite the bullet really and build uh, a cover for the model now it's uh, there's far too many uh, parts on it that are fragile and exposed so I'm going to build uh, a temporary cover for the model just out of some ply over the next week uh, and I'll just carry on uh, with the work on the shelter deck so there's these vents to build up and probably uh, build the pom-pom bandstand as well uh, over the next week so that's it for this part uh, I'll be back next week with uh, the case made hopefully the temporary case made and I'll show you the work that I managed to get done on the rest of the shelter deck details so that's uh, coming up next week on Friday in part 17 so I hope to see you then so that's it for this Part. I hope you've uh, picked up one or two hints and tips about building this uh, position at the back. Uh, I'll be pressing on over the next uh, few days with building the temporary uh, cover that I've described and I'll get done whatever I can on the rest of the shelter deck details so these uh, vents in particular and the pom-pom bandstand uh, I'll be tackling over the next week as well. So that's it for now. Uh, I'll be back again next Friday with the next part. So have a good week and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.